Well, that's right, Glenn. We can learn a lot from our DNA, including which diseases we could be at risk for. Joining me now is the researcher with Intermountain Medical Center, Heart Institute, Dr. John Carlquist. You did this research. Tell us what the findings were. Well, um, basically, let me explain what telomeres are, first of all. Um, they're the ends of the chromosomes. They're a long sequence of genetic inf or of DNA that contains no genetic information but they're very important because they protect the ends of the chromosomes. Uh, cells don't live in a perfect world uh, just like we don't and every time a cell divides the ends of those chromosomes become frayed and what telomeres do is they sort of absorb that damage rather than letting important information in the chromosome become lost. So they play a very important role but as the cells age they become shorter and shorter. And so, in a sense, they're sort of a measure of how old a person is, or actually how many environmental exposures, such as pollutants, smoking, that sort of thing, they've encountered in their life, because they shorten it as well. So what we can do is we look at these and we assess the, the amount of risk that a person has for disease by the length of these telomeres. And so what does the length, short or longer, tell you about? I know it gets complicated, but what can that tell you about the age and the potential for disease? Well. We have, they, they, they shorten at a predictive rate, or predictable rate, and when you look at a person who has a chronic age of, say, 55 years old, and their telomeres suggest they're actually much older than that, mm -hmm. they may in fact be at greater risk for age-associated diseases like heart disease, cancer, even dementia. So that's what we try to do is, is look at that in an age-adjusted manner and say, yes, maybe you are biologically a little older than, than what your driver's license is telling us. So I wonder, I mean, do people really want to know that information? I mean, it gets out there, there's the medical research, but then do you want to know that, okay, I'm, I could potentially get this particular d disease that I can't do anything about? Well, and that's a very good point. And I think a lot of the medical community and research community in general, general is struggling with that issue. Uh, what do people want to know? Mm -hmm. um, especially people involved in genetic research, which I'm associated with as well. I mean, I, I think it's probably split down the middle. Do you want to know the results or do you not want to know the results? Because if there's, especially if there's nothing you can do. However, in the case of telomere, it's been shown that um, in some cases you can actually reverse the effect. You can actually cause them to grow longer. Um, oh, that's interesting. It is interesting. And it's, uh, it's just the same mechanisms that you would expect. I mean, it's a healthy lifestyle. It's stress reduction. It's eating well. It's exercise. Those sorts of things have actually been shown that you can increase the length of the telomere. So basically, you can give yourself some extra time. It's true. If and so you touch on that. On the flip side of maybe some folks not wanting to know, but there are some folks, I mean, this is exciting research that people can maybe extend their lives. Or at least healthy living. Yeah, a quality of life. Yeah, I think that may be even more important. Uh -huh. uh, you know, you can maybe stave off some of those age-associated diseases. So interesting. Where can people find more of your research? Well, uh, we've published a number of papers. I think uh, a lot of them are um, online. They can, they can find those okay. and read about what we've done. All right. Excellent. Thank you so much for enlightening us on this really interesting research. Well, thank you for having me. All right. That is going to do it for us for the moment. We'll be right back.